In today's lesson, we address the question, what are node voltages and how are node voltages important for circuit analysis? Here we see a circuit with three light emitting diodes, one green, one yellow, one red. There's also three resistors and there's a five volt voltage source. In terms of nodes, we know that a node is a junction of two or more devices and we see several nodes in this circuit. Uh, there's a connection point between the 5 volt source and 100 ohm resistor. That's one node. Uh, there's another juncture point here with uh, two resistors and a diode. Node 2, node 3, node 4. And then there's a fifth node here. And remember that a juncture point connected by zero resistance wire is considered to be all one node. So we could say node 1, node 2, node 3, node 4, and node 5. Or we could say node A, node B, node C, node D, and node E. Let's go with the uh, letters for the, today's example. Now a node voltage is the voltage at a particular node relative to a reference node. So we're going to have to choose one of these to be a reference node and we'll indicate that with the ground symbol. If I chose node E as the ground symbol, and now we could speak of the voltage at node A relative to that ground reference point or V sub B, V sub C, V sub D, but there's nothing magical about that particular point E. I could have also picked, let's say, node D. So I could have put the reference symbol here. And now I'd be able to speak of V sub A, V sub B, V sub C, and V sub E relative to that reference point. Well, let's go back and have node E be our reference symbol. So here's the reference node and here's the four node voltages, V sub A, V sub B, V sub C, and V sub D. So if this were an actual circuit, I could measure V sub A by putting the red lead of the voltmeter here, the black lead here, and measure the voltage. That would be the node voltage V sub A. Well, we don't have to talk about what we would do if it were an actual circuit. Let's build the circuit and do some measurement. Here is the circuit on a protoboard. The 5 volt supply is not actually seen in this image, but the plus 5 volts is connected to the red. This white lead goes to the minus supply of the, of the 5 volt. Here's a 100 ohm resistor, a 10 ohm resistor, another 10 ohm resistor. Here we see the green, yellow, and red LEDs, and they're connected into the same connection point or same node as the white lead is. Here we've added some notation to help us correlate the circuit on the protoboard with the one we saw in the paper. Here's node A where the 5 volt supply joins in with the 100 ohm resistor. Here's node B where we have the two resistors and the green LED joined together. Likewise for node C and D and of course the node we've chosen our reference with which we measure the other node voltages in respect to. Let's bring a voltmeter into the picture. Let's place the red lead on node A, the black lead on the, on the ground, and I'm measuring 4.98 volts. That's the voltage coming from the alleged 5 volt supply. It's not exactly 5 volts, but it's within specifications. For node B, that node voltage is 2.093 volts or 2.092. And finally for node D we see a voltage of 1.831. So again what we've done is systematically measure the volts between each of the nodes relative to the reference node that we've designated with the ground. So we'll call our readings say plus or minus 10 millivolts in accuracy. And here are those voltages on the circuit. Now, originally we talked about we want to be able to find for voltage all the circuit parameters, voltage and current for each of each element. Well, we have uh, 14 circuit parameters here then, 7 times 2, and we've measured four node voltages. We're going to say that those node voltages will allow us to deduce all of the other circuit parameters as well. How can we do that? Well, let's take a closer look at the nature of node voltages. First of all, there are four devices where the node voltage is the voltage across that element. The voltage across the red diode, call that V sub R, plus and minus reference sign, is node D voltage. The node voltage V sub D is the voltage 
from this point in the circuit to this point in the circuit. It's across those two points and V sub R is exactly that same voltage. And likewise V sub Y, the voltage across the yellow LEDs equal to node voltage V sub C. Voltage V sub G across the green diodes, node voltage V sub B. V sub S, the voltage across the DC supply is equal to the node voltage V sub A. So in this circuit, the node voltages give us directly the voltages across four of the elements, but what if I wanted to know the voltage across this resistor? Let's call that V1. Can we obtain V1 from our measurements? Let's use KVL around this first loop here. By KVL, we can say that minus Vs plus V1 plus V sub G is equal to zero. We know V sub S and V sub G in terms of the node voltages. V sub S is equal to VA. V sub G is equal to V sub B. So writing things in terms of the node voltages, minus VA plus V1 plus VB is equal to zero, or V1 is equal to VA minus VB. So knowing the node voltages also gives us the value of V1. Actually, since any two terminal circuit element terminates in a node at either end, we can always express the element voltage as the difference between the two node voltages. Which gets the plus sign, which gets the minus sign. We express it as V1 is equal to one node voltage minus another node voltage, where the first node voltage corresponds to the plus sign and the second node voltage corresponds to the minus sign. Beyond just considering the voltage across a particular 100 ohm resistor in a particular circuit, we can generalize to say that if I have some element K in a circuit and it's connected between node X and node Y, the element voltage V sub K is equal to node voltage at X minus the node voltage at Y, where the node X corresponds to the plus reference sign on the uh, element K voltage and Y corresponds to the node that's associated with the minus reference sign on the element voltage V sub K. We may emphasize then that if we know all the node voltages, then we can determine all the element voltages by using this equation. This is a property relating node voltages to element voltages. So we are able to predict from the node voltage values that V1, the voltage across the 100 ohm resistor, is 4.98 minus 2.09 or 2.89 volts. V sub 2 would be 2.09 minus 1.92 or 0.17 volts. And V3 would be the node voltage at C minus the node voltage at D, which is 0.09 volts. These are to within our 10 millivolt accuracy limits. Let's go back to our circuit and measure those voltages. Here's the voltage across the 100 ohm resistor, 2.89 volts. That's in agreement with what we found. The voltage across the first 10 ohm resistor, which we called V2, is equal to 0.171 volts, again in agreement. And finally, for V3, we're measuring 0.09 volts. Again, agreement with what the node voltages uh, would have allowed us to predict. Well, now we've been able to deduce all seven element voltages from the node voltages. This begs the question, though, what about the currents? Can we get those as well? Let's first of all turn to the resistors where we have Ohm's law at our disposal. If we know the voltage across the resistor, we, and we know the resistor value, of course, we can get the resistor current. So by Ohm's law, I1 is equal to 2.89 volts divided by 100 ohms or 28.9 milliamps. I2 is equal to 17 milliamps and I3 is equal to 9 milliamps. Now we can use KCL to get the other four currents. For example, applying KCL at this node, IS is minus 28.9 milliamps. This is using passive sign notation. Negative IV indicates it's delivering power. We can say that I sub R, applying KCL at the node on the far right, is equal to nine milliamps. Now for the green and yellow LEDs, we have three currents to account for at a node. For the yellow LED, applying KCL at this node, which we had previously called node C, 
the yellow LED current has to satisfy KCL at that node, which means that its current is 17 milliamps minus 9 milliamps or 8 milliamps. And likewise, applying KCL at what we had previously called node B, for the green LED, its current by KCL must be equal to 28.9 milliamps minus 17 milliamps, or 11.9 milliamps. In this example, we measured four node voltages, and then we deduced the element current and element voltage for each one of the elements, 14 circuit parameters in, in total. And we did that deduction by simple one-line Ohm's Law KCL type calculations. Now the question that I'd like to leave this lesson with, might there be a method where we can calculate the node voltages? Can we write down n minus 1 uh, equations from which we solve for n minus 1 node voltages and then again deduce all the element and IV expressions? Generally, n minus 1 is a small number of equations compared to writing down all the KCL, KVL, and element constraints. The answer is yes, and we'll see that in a future lesson from how writing down KCL at the n minus 1 independent nodes allows us to come up with an expression that can be solved for the node voltages. This concludes this lesson on what are node voltages. We've seen how node voltages are defined and we've seen how knowing the node voltages allow us to determine all the element I and V values and we leave with the anticipation of developing a methodology for calculating the node voltages.